Hello, and welcome back to the World Storytelling Cafe here on May Day. And as I've been told, May Day, or May, is the merriest month of all. For it was a time long ago for making sport for May Day games. To see who could run the fastest, who could leap the longest. And there were bonfires. Now, often we think of only having a bonfire on bonfire night on November the 5th, but they had bonfires across the year, especially big ones on May Day. Even in big cities like London, they had fires. There would be feasting. There would be merrymaking. There would be song, dance and laughter. And when, at last, the songs, the music died down, as all went quiet, well, it would be time for storytelling telling tales, sharing stories, just as we've all been doing on the World Storytelling Cafe. And since it's May Day, we've got a special rare old treat for you, because today we've got Taffy Thomas telling a tale. He's stuck up in his house in Grasmere, but he's gifted us a very special animated tale. For such is the, like the fame, I suppose you'd say, uh, Taffy Thomas, that the love certainly that many of these tales have been animated. They're very special indeed. I first heard about Taffy when I first started storytelling long ago. And I met him quite a few years ago now. The first time was at Settle Storytelling Festival, where I hope he won't mind me saying this. He had a bit of a gammy leg, and so I had to step into his story walk for him. But the point was, I suppose, at least it meant that we met and we soon became firm friends. But that's no boast on my part, for know that Taffy Thomas has lots and lots of friends. And that's in part because of the way he collects his stories, face to face, passing them from tongue to air, as we storytellers like to say. I remember once we were both telling a Whitby Folk Week, where uh, Taffy always tells, and I was very lucky. I think it was the first time I went up there. I'd shared a stage with him, and I was walking with him to the next venue, to the pub, where he was going to tell some more tales. Now, in truth, it was only actually a, a five- or ten-minute journey, or should have been anyway. But with Taffy Thomas, it took nigh on an hour, as so many people, so many friends of his, came to talk to him, to ask him how he was. And Taffy took the time to talk to all of them, to ask them how they and all of their families were. That's how popular he is. And so, my friends, if you're not friends with Taffy Thomas already, well, it's time for you to make friends with him now, as he tells a few tales and tells something of the library in his mind. Good afternoon, ladles and jelly spoons. Good afternoon. My name is Taffy Thomas, and I've got the best job in the world, because my job is telling stories. Stories, tales, and elaborate lies. And most of the other people who do that are in Parliament. And sadly, that is true. Every day, I travel from my home here in Grasmere to somewhere where people want to hear stories. Some days I'm in a school, some days I'm in a library, some days I'm even in a pub. Now I tell you, I'm a storyteller, and that's true, but I used to be a fire eater. I used to be a fisherman. I used to be an escapologist. In fact, you could fill a very large bucket with things I used to to be. At the age of 36, I suffered a massive stroke. I lost my speech and a fair bit of the left side of my body. For 16 years, I've been some kind of a clown acrobat, but now suddenly I couldn't sing, I couldn't dance, I couldn't even clap my hands. The crowd passed to the other side of the street and I was alone in the dark. Pfft. 
They told me I had to do something more sensible than fire eating. So I used storytelling to learn to speak again and created the beautiful piece of textile art that is my tail coat and pork pie hat. When I put this on, I become a jukebox because every picture on the coat is one of the stories in my head. So members of the audience could come out and pick the next tale to help to create the show. So a big clap for Jesse. Come on, lean to your feet. Come out, I'll do a little, I'll do, I'll do a little spin so you can decide which story you'd like. Now for 500 years, there's been a poet laureate. For 10 years, there's been a children's laureate. And earlier in 2010, a group of poets decided there should be a laureate for storytelling. And I was honored that they invited me. And I'm the first ever laureate for storytelling. So really the role is to be a spokesperson for storytelling, to help to find a new audience for storytelling, an ancient art that was in danger of possibly dying out. Because if speaking was more important than listening, we'd have two tongues and one ear. I've got about 300 stories, and those stories have legs. They have legs because whenever I walk into this garden, or I walk into a school, or a library, or a pub, the stories walk in hand in hand with me. And they walk in with me because they walked to me. Because I got my stories, not from books, but from people I met. Started when I was 18. I was taken to meet a very old lady in Somerset called Ruth Tung. Great name for a storyteller, isn't it, Ruth Tung? A very old lady in Somerset. I sat with her drinking tea, and then at the end of the afternoon, she said, well, Mr. Thomas, I better tell you a story. Well, I was hooked. From that moment, I set out to find people who have stories. More recently, I've been finding stories from people in the Lake District in Cumbria who know some of the local legends, because they're mainly half remembered. We have to patch them together. This took me in Kirby Lonsdale to George Harrison, a local historian who's been able to tell me the legend of the Devil's Bridge. It was told to be my, my grandfather, and he got it from his grandfather. So it has been in the family for generations. The legend of the Devil's Bridge happened like this. The tiny town of Kirby Lonsdale stands on the banks of the River Loon on the Cumbria, Lancashire and Yorkshire border. Every Thursday, it has a market. Every week, a farmer's wife came from Yorkshire to sell her bread buns. She came with a dog, a little Yorkshire terrier called Charlie. Now Charlie the dog's legs were so short, they only just reached the ground. This day, she set up the bread stall and started trading. It started to rain. It rained all day. Despite this, she sold all of the bread buns except for one. Returning to the little wooden footbridge over the loon, she found the river had flooded and the wooden bridge had been swept away. Poor lass, she gazed at the grey water swirling. How could she get home to feed her husband and the animals on the farm? Suddenly, there was a flash of light and there beside her on the riverbank was a little man, two horns, hooves and a tail. Old Nick, old Scratch, the devil himself. And the devil said to the farmer's wife, my dear, why are you so fed up? And she said, I need a bridge across this river. And the devil said, I can build you one overnight, but there's a price to pay. The soul of the first living creature to cross the bridge comes with me to burn in the fires of hell. The farmer's wife patted Charlie the dog on the head and had an idea. She lay with the dog under a tree to sleep. The devil put on his apron and he was up on the fell side collecting rocks and collected enough rock and stone to build a bridge 
which to this day is still known as the Devil's Bridge. As the sun rose, he woke the farmer's wife and the dog and said, Madam, there's your bridge, but you remember the bargain. The farmer's wife took the one remaining bread bun from her bag and waved under Charlie the dog's nose. Charlie got the scent of a breakfast and in his mind he became a greyhound. She rolled the bun across the bridge and Charlie the dog shot after it. The farmer's wife said, now there's the first living creature to cross the bridge. Well, the devil realised he'd been outwitted. He ran to the middle of the bridge Rah! and he slapped his right claw on the right-hand parapet of the bridge, making an imprint that remains there to this day. People remember their history as stories. And the stories we choose to listen to, the stories we choose to tell, are a statement of who we are, our cultural identity, what we are, really. When I tell a story, standing behind me are ghosts. They're the ghosts of all the people who have ever given me the stories. Stanley, Duncan, Betsy, Ruth, I've named most of them, but they're there to help me. And the time is approaching when I shall be the ghost behind the next generation of storytellers, helping them to tell stories that they've found from me. Because if the stories were presents to me, then they're presents from me, presents for future generations. Gaia. Good afternoon, ladies and jelly spoons. Good afternoon. Well, I hope you enjoyed Taffy's Tales. I'm sure you did. And if you did, don't forget to come and watch more at the theworldstorytellingcafe.com. And don't forget the virtual hats of some of those storytellers who have taken the time to share some of their favourite stories with you. Goodbye.